carefully and roll and Soon may the weatherman come to make the coffee and tea and rum. Soon may the weatherman come to sing and gong, king, gong, gong. Okay. Who likes Tom and Jerry? I could take him down. Do you want me to take him down? I forget how funny you are. Why are you so funny? Because why would I spend my time remembering how funny you are? You know how much energy that would take? Just imagining yeah, what you're thinking about it all the time. I know how funny you are. No, I have you filed under very funny, but then when I'm with you, and you, you're even funnier than I remember. <laughs> Scoop doo. Blabbity blue. Scoop D. You know, my fan, maybe I said this last time, but I'm going to be worried about that. No, I'm not. But, I, you know, you got to be aware when you're a repeat, when you're a repeat. Bam. Bam. <laughs> Re- repeat homes. Yeah. Oh, that's good. There you go. Uh, my fantasy is always, like, as a child, I always just wanted to be heard so. That was very funny. You're just very funny. Thank you. I would just watch you. Well, it's rickglassman.com. You can check out the no, Take no, Your no. Sh- Shoes Off podcast. No, no. So what are you repeating? You just always wanted to be heard. Also, before we get Will in- you turn you down and me up? Yeah. And that's not subtle, what I'm asking. <sighs> wow. You can edit. Oh, me. I said a oh, little. How's this? That's passive aggressive. No, that's just aggressive. Okay. I, I just feel like so- What's up? <laughs> This episode is sponsored by Next Evo Naturals. Fabulous. <laughs> Get 25% off your first order of $40 or more at nextevo.com with code TISO. That's 25% off at nextevo.com, code that's, TISO. It's a bargain. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Helix Sleep. Helix Sleep is one of my favorite you just, sponsors. You just got to give the, the website oh, right. for this okay. part. We'll okay. tell more about it later. All right. You could, we'll continue. We'll HelixSleep.com slash Tyso for up to $200 off your mattress purchase and two free pillows. <laughs> so you were about to talk about something uh, that we were going to cut out because you said in the first podcast about being heard. No, just that my fantasy, like when I can really get in a quiet room with mm-hmm. my dad, I can have a great conversation. I feel like if I threw these these headphones on, we could have a headphones. Real... Or do you like these in particular? Just like these are these are pretty great. These, these are, are really these are great. real nice. Do these you are ever... like Princess Leia. Mm. Oh, I can see you hosting. Caught you hosting. Catching you hosting right now. You're being a generous host. What did I do that was generous? You stopped talking. You you yielded. It was lovely. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, man. So <laughs> I just kind of look into the middle distance. Pete, I was talking to a friend of mine on the phone today about the, do you remember the Bill Clinton scandal, what happened with the Monica Lewinsky? Oh yeah, I watched the whole thing. I mean, the, you were the, in re, the, the reenactment of it. I can't believe. With Clive Drexler. Owen. Let me put that on mute. Sorry, my, uh, my laptop just got an email. Let me get you, get you. This is like when I call my mom. If I call my mom and I'm not in a sensory deprivation tank, the whole time she's like, what is that? I'm like, it's my dog breathing. What is that? I, I took a bite of a sandwich. Like she's, she's freaking out. Yeah, well you probably, your mom's probably just a World War II refugee. Mm-hmm. Is she? How old are you? I'm World War 22. <laughs> I, I could have said World War 42. I'm 43. She left Lithuania when she was seven. Wow. I wonder if she knew my girlfriend's ex-girlfriend's mom. Was she a Lithuanian refugee? Yugoslavian refugee, I think. But isn't that the same thing? Wow. Sim- similar, right? Hmm. I guess so. I'm being serious. Do you know the answer to that? Buddy, I couldn't find Lithuania on a map, and yet I claim it all the time because it's funny. I like how you said on a map without any condition as if you could find it somewhere else. I could find it if it was isolated on a flashcard right. and it said Lithuania. Yeah. I'd go, okay. So I just wanted to talk to you about what happened about that cigar. and how In cra- the veg. How crazy is that? And what do you think would happen if, if um, what's the guy's name? Joe Biden put it in, in uh, a cigar in Monica Lewinsky's snatch today snatch what do you call it Vag? never snatch i'm sorry 
You, I'm the first one to recoil at snatch. You're you're the most Christian guest I've ever had. That is not because I love the Lord. I just snatch I'm, I'm exclusively a, Jewish people. Kristen Bell and snatch. Oh, uh, shout out to John Michael who helps edit the podcast. Okay. He said, uh, "Tell Pete." Oh yeah, we have to set a timer. That how much I love sixty minutes? season three of Crashing. Huh? Season sixty minutes. Okay, uh, seventy five minutes. What do you what? What's a normal episode? Ninety. Set a timer for ninety minutes. Set a timer for ninety minutes. We'll see what sounds we have. One hour and thirty minutes starting now. See, I got I got my Siri. So the first time we podcasted, nice uh, and quiet. Yeah, buddy. Uh, you need me to raise your levels? No, no, no. My Siri doesn't talk. She doesn't tell me she did it. She just does right. it. You, you have everybody lower their mics. So the first time we podcasted, it was great. And we were in the pocket and we missed our dismount. And I take responsibility for that. You don't have to. We both were to blame. I remember the last time we did it, there was a moment. And when I drove home, I said to myself, I said, Pete, this is your people pleasy lesson today. You wouldn't speak up. Like when you get a massage and the pressure's just too firm. Interesting. I'll I, sit through it. I'm the opposite. And, and you were taking me I, I need too long. Oh, really? You never had a Thai massage where they're like really ripping into you? Good. With the feet? Feet I needed as hard as possible. You want it as hard as possible? Yeah. Well, well, I will endure that, but I won't enjoy it. Yeah, so I, I noticed when we were done, because I was done too. Yeah, you were done too, but maybe did you, you tell me, did you like still have things you wanted to? Just a good time. A good time. I didn't know you. It's we got to know to, each other. We laughed. Well, you came to my birthday party. Yes, but we pod before that. I'm no, saying, I know. What I'm saying is now we're mm. more comfortable with one mm. another and we've hung out socially. Mm. And when you were at my birthday party, and this is a good compliment, I think, I just kept going back to you. Like there mm. are all these people I know, which can be overwhelming. What? But, a lot of people that you know? I'm a... I'm a I like this. I don't like that. I don't like this. Mm -hmm. I like this, mm -hmm. not this. Tell, explain to people for audio only what you were doing. This is jazz hands. Uh -huh, which represents a lot of people. Lots of people. It doesn't matter if I love every single one of them. I'd rather be with one person I sort of like than 50 people I love. Oh, yeah. That's an extreme version of it. I just don't like groups. That's why I love stand-up comedy. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Sorry. I not just... you. I'm talking to crowds. Sit down. Right, low, low, lower their mics. You just want, you don't care how many people are there, you just need to be at least 50% of the audio. It doesn't even have to be me. I like stand-up comedy when I'm just watching it. You like to go to I shows? Like, <laughs> on my night, You want to come, you wanna come watch my next show? Shows. <laughs> I'm always going to shows. I just like the format of it because it's an agreed upon format where it's like, let's look at that. Like, I, I like movies, you know what I mean? Concerts, I not it. so much, because I, I, I don't know what to do. At a movie, I'm like enjoying it. I'm like, ooh, are they going to get out? At music, I'm like, yeah. wow, it's that fucking song I heard on a CD. I like, feel that way about concerts. I, yeah. could listen to, uh, I could listen to the music at home. Buddy, you mean on this beautiful couch? Mm -hmm. Throw it on. The studio way. Yeah. Tom Petty can't harmonize with Tom Petty when it's Tom Petty in real life. He That's can in the where studio. I'm going to disagree with you. We'll cut to a clip. You don't have to live like a refugee. So what happened? It got <laughs> loud. Like I don't, I don't think I know. That that yelling really chemically affected me. I just want you to know that. So you're a sensey baby too. I'm a sensey baby. Are you a sensey baby? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why we get along. How much money do you have? On me? No. In the bank. How much have you how much do you have in the bank? Inclu what's my what's in my net worth? Including liquid investments. A good rule of thumb is if you Google someone's net worth, it's about half. Don't do this. Why? Don't do this to me. Why? First of all, I made that up. You're Googling How my... How much money does Pete Holmes have? You're Googling my net worth. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you if I believe half is over or under. Okay. And like then you'll that. tell me now, if I'm right I or like wrong. This. Now it's playful and I like it. Oh, you better be over half what of this it? or you what fucking what poor fucking what cuck. Is what is it? Cuck. It's, it says your net... show? Snatch cuck? <laughs> What is it? What does it say? It says your net worth is four million. You have to have more than two million. Otherwise, you might need to start going to more comedy shows. Yeah, I don't. That what a weird thing. Uh, you've you found a nerve. I I want. <laughs> no, I'm interested. Like, why don't I want to admit that? I know why. Because you want you watch comedians and and like I, whenever I see like Louis used to have a bit 
about like flying commercial. Real quick, let me like, interrupt. Yeah, when yeah, you yeah. say Lou, you have to go like this. You have to go. You have to go That's first. That's what we do. On, on my part, I go scandal acknowledged. Do you? Yeah, we Small say scandal world. acknowledged. Because I want you to know that I know. Okay? So go, but just do but it also he, On ours, we go. Okay, ready? Louis C.K. No, no. Before, why you say the name? All right, so actually, take a beat. Yeah. Figure out how to do it. You realize you can't, so you just mumble the thing. So it's like, Louis C.K. Great. Yeah, go ahead. Like when you say cancer, if you're an old woman. He has cancer. Like that, right? Yes. You didn't like it. It's dark. It's not a one for one. It's it's good. It's a good. It's a good analogy. But cancer exists. All right. So take it from I heard. I struck. Uh, 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 you struck a nerve. Uh, it struck a nerve. Oh right. Well, Louis had that bit. <laughs> we were wound for a purpose, my friend. Oh right. Louis had that bit about being on a plane and they had the Wi-Fi and, and like, like then the Wi-Fi went off and the guy next to him got mad that the Wi-Fi was turned off. And I'm sitting there watching it going like, this is like peak Louis. I'm like, you don't fly commercial. This guy's in a jet. Uh, you know what I mean? So there is, and I, I feel the same way when I watch a lot of comedians. Or you like, want them to be relatable to the audience. You want them to, and you do. I think if you said... One time on stage, I talked, I, you don't want to talk about like money. You don't want to be a fancy boy on stage. If every comedian went on stage and said, I have $4 million and then did their act, it's going to be 70% less fun. Yeah, but if every comedian goes on stage and says, I like big balloon parties, it would be like, why is everybody talking about the same thing? Big balloon parties? I'm saying if everybody said, but if one person oh, said, if you went on stage well, and what said- what I was going to say- Look, Do it. Caught you hosting. Ali Wong talks about being a millionaire. And after her set, I was like, I really admire that because I would like to talk about what it's like when you become what so many people are trying to become. You which can. Is, I know you can. And she does it. And it was really cool. But I don't have my angle yet. I have a couple bits about what it's like to be rich. One of them is if you can't find a DVD, you just buy the movie. <laughs> like that, that's one of the ways that you yeah, can tell you Yeah, that's also a bit you could have done in 2008. I did do it in 2008. I've been doing well for a long time. <laughs> right? no, one's rebuy, no one's looking for the DVDs. I actually um, have a bit how I identify as a millionaire. You, so you're not a millionaire. Yeah, I am. I'm not anymore, crypto. But I identify how as How much one. crypto did you buy? A buy, not, not much. I've what been in mean? it for- you rented it? I, I, no, I didn't buy, I've been in it for a while. What do you mean? So my principal investment is not that high. Oh. But it but it I went I, way up. Yeah. And I've sold pieces here and there, but I've just been holding on. It's like it doesn't exist anymore. I just put it away. How much? Bitcoin? A lot of Bitcoin. Ethereum? Tons of it. Bitcoin cash? Mm, I do have a little from a little goofy game back in the day. Ding? No ding. Dong? You can't say those two back to back. Ding dong? Yeah. It's gorilla. No, I don't know. I'm just Although I do have um, uh, 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 a degenerate ape. Meet him. Wow. See, I don't expect apes to act well, but this one really is a degenerate. Mm -hmm. My brother, who writes comedy as well, wrote a very funny sketch called Ellen Degenerate, and I really liked it. I want to go back, though. To what? Catch me hosting. One, I don't have that much Bitcoin. I'm just poor, just like the rest of you. See? So come see me in concert. This is, this is only, Radio City so Hall. far I've agreed to do this and it's only hurting my relatability. <laughs> but you know what's funny is I do like, I have a lot of bits about how it's not wonderful. Like being, I, I enjoy not having to think about money. That's what's great about money, first and foremost. Well, of course. But then when I go to the uber rich, and I'm not, I want to be clear, I'm not talking about Conan and I'm not talking about Judd. There's just people that I've met over the years that you go to their house and they're like so lonely and so desperate. I'm like, your mansion becomes a mausoleum. Speaking of Judd, kind of like in Funny People. It is like, well, that's what Judd is skewering. Judd has a full life. He has a family. He has, he gives his love and his, his, his help You're to so many people. You're talking about Ashley Judd? Ashley Judd. Yes. Ashley Judd Hirsch. Uh -huh. But Judd Apatow has a life outside of himself and that's super important but a lot of people their number comes in let's say we're talking like super rich you have a hundred million dollars mm. i know some of these people they're never in their homes they have some place in fucking malibu doesn't matter i know one person that for sure has a hundred million 
I know three people that have $100 million. Combined? Uh, two, uh, each of them. JK. And two of them are family men. That's great. I'm, that's not... So everybody should have $100 million is what I'm getting at. <laughs> I mean, that's a great start. I know people... I've been to people's houses that have millions of dollars and a family, and they're still... They're stuck somewhere. But who cares about all that? What I want to talk about... <laughs> what I want to talk about is what gets you off, man? What makes you laugh? What do you seek? You know, what is... What do you... Because you got a family. You're working. You got comedy. You've done the hustle. You're still in it, but you've done the part that you got to the place. And now it's like... Let me, t let me tell you analogously, just through the podcast, because we're doing it. I've been doing this podcast for, I don't know, two and a half years and the first year, it, it, I felt like I never slept. And then the second year, I got made, had a little money and I got a little help. And now, shout out to John Michael, shout out to Tom. I have some help and it's like, and I'm starting to feel like I did the work already. And now let me just do it week to week instead of stressing over it. Not that it's the most successful thing in the world. But, like, but now I am, I am, I've gone like this with the podcast and I'm back in a place of enjoying it. I'm back in a place where, Pete, come over, let's talk. Mm. Instead of, I, I got to turn this around so quick. Well, you are a worker. And you like the first time I noticed, uh, the first thing I noticed when I did this last time was that you really, like, remember, I was like, oh, you edit and you, you have the cut points and the bits and all this stuff. And one of the things that made my podcast so easy to do, and it has been very easy and, and pleasurable to do for 10 years, mm. Is You've that been doing we, it for 10 years. 10, wow. Well, over 10 years. We're in the 600s of episodes. Well, one a week. Uh, it's one with a guest a week. Yeah. yeah. And then on Friday, it's me and my wife, which is great. Uh, oh, so, it's, so you've done 300 weeks. That's six years. Th we're not counting the ones with my wife. Those are their own. We've done 90 of those. We've done 600 and some of the wow. guest episodes. So that's 10 years. And one of the... Katie Levine, my producer, makes it so wonderful. Okay. You're going to... Put her Instagram handle up. A little Chiron? Yeah. Ooh. Uh, and here's her email. And <laughs> and all we do is chat and there and there's no and there's no editing and stuff, which which is the kind of podcast that I, I like. I like mm -hmm. podcasts like this as well. But I can understand why you got tired out in two and a half years of it takes a lot of effort, you know. But by both by finding where it's sustainable and accepting that this is what it has become, or at least in this moment, has allowed me to not feel like I'm chasing anymore, which yeah. both is less exciting and more and easier. Sure. This is, this is one of the keys to life, by the way, is to figure out how to do things for their own sake, which is what I'm always trying to do. Could you give another example outside of- There's plenty of examples. This? It's like um, I have a, a post-it on my computer that says for its own sake. So when you're writing a script, try to enjoy writing a script. People sometimes think it's morbid to say your heart could stop or you could explode or whatever it might be. Who? Who I don't would say know. That? You thought it was dark that I mm, talked about cancer. Okay. That so, I said cancer, and now I'm talking about exploding, and you're fine with it. I, I was being uh, ironic. <laughs> Some people would think it's dark to think you might fall off a cliff tomorrow. Who would think that's dark? You are fun. That guy who climbed the the face of whatever. Uh, listen. No, but you say for the sake of it. So, how do you do a script where you're like, it, "I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy this"? What tools Here's, do you have? Drop in, drop anchor. It really does feel like dropping an anchor. Like right now, this is the example. This, for its own sake, we, I agree. We, I, we, I feel no, this I know. right now. I, I don't think I need to explain this to you. It's one of the things I love about you is you feel like you're. I like to say the needle's on the record. Just play the note you're playing. You know what I mean of the song. But how do you do that with work that's hard, like writing a script where you're like, because I assume you use the example, like, enjoy, because a lot of people could be like, oh, I got so many hours, I got deadlines, or whatever the negative view on that could be. But you're saying, no, just enjoy. Do it for its own sake, yeah. You know, my dad has a saying, I think it's the same thing, and I'm connecting with it a little different. He always says, um, he often says, I'm sorry, hyperbole, uh, enjoy every sandwich. Enjoy every sandwich. And, you know, I'm not correcting your dad. Enjoy every bite of every sandwich. You know what I mean? It, like Sounds that, like you're correcting my a dad. A little bit. Could we get him on the phone? <laughs> JK, I know you would. Um, you zesty devil. I love getting dad on the pod. I love getting your dad on my pod. Is he available? I would love, I would love, before, if I were to ever guest on your podcast, I want to set this contingency. You have to have my dad on first. First. Base. 
that's a way to really delay. Make sure, make sure that, <laughs> that, never, that neither of us are getting on. I actually feel uncon- uncomfortable that you've never been on the cuz we got to do it. Oh, could we zoom are in you, on this? I would sure. love to, but I would love to make if do you really feel uncomfortable about that? No, just for a moment I was like, "Oh right. It's honestly you should feel if if you feel weird at all." That's how Not off my mind it was. I was like, "Why haven't I done that?" I have a list. I'm always trying to get guests. I'm trying to think of who I'd the hardest fun part with. of podcasting. I know. And then I was like, and here we are having a great time. You're somebody I always enjoy talking to. And you do bits. There are people that I love talking to, but they don't always do bits. And you, come you know and what? You the you're a, you're a, the you're, exception you're a, of a person who, say, who normally it's, you always do bits. <laughs> but you're like, you always do bits. I love bits. That's why I, love I, I kept going over to you to my party. Do you realize the number one perk of being a comedian is that you get to hang out with comedians? I have. I say all the time, I have the funniest friends in the world. I get to laugh all That's the, the time. And then people are like, yeah, but you're always doing bits. And it's like, well, first of all, get off my ass. Get off my ass. When we're in groups, of get course I'm always doing snatch, bits. you say. Bits are a way to Check not, in? Yes. Sorry. No. Or, it's a, a bit is a way of going, will you connect with me over this? I, but the thing is, most people, that's not their fluent language. I agree. So you leave them alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you leave yeah, them yeah. alone. But with me, I love, I love you because you do bets. What were we saying? I remember. But first, I want to talk about you saying uncomfortable because, oh, that you haven't had me on. I want to know your take on what happens when you meet somebody and they go, we've already met. Or you meet somebody and you forgot their name. Do you get uncomfortable? I used to. And now I've actually had to give myself the note recently where I go, um, I'll just say nice to meet you. And if they say nice, uh, we've already met, I'll just, I just own it. Like let, I'll have to do it. Sure. Nice to meet you. Can we take it back sure. a little bit though? So like, sure. so maybe we're in a group, right? I'm trying to really think of what I would do. Okay. okay? Uh, this is, this is, have you met my friend? Uh, oh, this is my friend Pete. Oh, hey. Hey man. Hi. Nice to meet you, Pete. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, we actually met a couple. Oh, wow. Shit. That's, no, you that's a nightmare. That's how you would do it. I just don't care. I mean, like, I care about a lot of things, but I've stopped caring about that. I've that that was one that I had to let go because I used to replay it. I always used to say "nice to see you" just to avoid all that stuff. Yeah. And now, depending on how zesty I am, Pete, there's a scale for zestiness. All, yeah. Ten is mean, Pete. He's the Pete that does roasts and stuff. Zero in the middle, and then there's like negative ten, who's like super. So why not just make it zero to twenty? Hmm. <laughs> I'm mad at you. Mm-hmm. Are we at a, are we at a I'm five? A 10 now. <laughs> five out of ten, or a fifteen out of twenty? <laughs> Still mad about the net worth thing, um, JK. Uh, but but I, I I stopped caring about that. That it's taking up too much of my life. Which we, I I want to go to the point of, of of dropping the needle on the record and, and being in the moment because I think correct me if I'm wrong, but the thing that uh, maybe you're doing a script and it's difficult. And I understand a lot of the things that I do are self-imposed deadlines. So it's hard, it's harder to enjoy something for its own sake when someone else is asking you to do it or it needs to be done in a couple hours. I understand that pressure mm-hmm. can make this different. But a lot of things, if you're doing a set, stand-up set, if you're writing a script, uh, if you're in between takes on a show, if you're doing a podcast, whatever it may be, um, a huge key to life, two things. I'm going to work both of my favorite things in. Do it for its own sake, meaning this is an end in itself. I, I'm not going to postpone my happiness to when this script gets sold, when it gets made, when it's a hit, all that shit. Fuck that shit. I like writing scripts. And I like writing this line of this script. Enjoy every sandwich. Two is just saying Enjoy yes everybody. to everything. Uh, uh- I can't be present with you until I remember that I think I need to focus that room cam. I can see that. You think I didn't feel you? It happened seconds ago. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll find thousands of choices. Including carpet. Hardwood. Rugs. And luxury vinyl. So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise, with more than 50 years as a family-owned business, we've got you covered! You, you uh, uh, don't mind when somebody says, and we're, we're, we're juggling both, you don't mind when somebody says, we've already met, but how do you feel when you're in a situation that you know you've met the person, and multiple times, 
And this isn't just a, a stranger. This is somebody who's close to somebody that you're with maybe. Mm. And they say nice to meet you to me. You can't remember their name. Oh. I panic. I hear you. I feel like because we're so similar, I might just today maybe, I feel like I've just processed some of this and I'm happy to report to you that it is possible that in that situation, I'll give you two. We go to a restaurant called Crossroads. It's a vegan restaurant. In there. And I love it. Uh, the manager's name is Brian. Uh, I love Brian. Shout out to Brian. I know the manager's name is Brian because one at one point after we'd been going there for years and Brian was always so nice to yeah. us, I didn't know his name. I asked one of the waiters. I go, I'm sorry. It's, I'm past the threshold. Mm -hmm. I can't ask Brian what his name is. Yes. What is his name? So I'll try first covert. Right. Okay. But if, okay, okay. Then my dad does that. Okay. He says something you clearly understood. He goes, okay. Oh, your it's, dad's a it's, goofball. It's, uh, it's not my favorite. I get a toothpick, okay? I knew no one didn't know what you meant. Your dad sounds like Donald Trump a little bit with, with cotton balls in his mouth. People say, uh, Peter Griffin. Peter, it's your father speaking. I'm just sitting here at Dunkin' Donuts. Either way, cotton balls. Looking at the uh, globe when I saw that Tim Allen has a new sitcom coming out. Your dad likes Tim Allen. I can he see just that. wants to be. Like, I was just wondering if uh, you were going to be on that show or something like just something completely out of left field um, and loving and nice. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> and there you go. I'm still scared of my dad and loving and nice. Love yeah. you, Pop. Um, Brian. What were you saying, Brian? You'll ask. Covert. Oh, and then if in, that in life situations, sometimes I'll just go. Look, I feel weird. We're past the point where I should be asking this, but I don't want to pretend. Remind me your name. Yeah. That's what I do if there's no other option. Yeah, it's the ripcord. But sometimes I should I should know their name. I mean, I lived with them for six years. I mean, it's that serious. I run into people that have been on my podcast, which means I've had a two, three hour in-depth heartfelt uh -huh. conversation where they told me about the time they almost died. And I'm like- How are their audio eh. levels? Were Fair. they down? Fair. Fair. Um, Fair. I had a situation. Um, I, I can't remember faces either. And Me it's, neither. Uh, Who cares? Who cares? All right, I wanted to tell you an anecdote. No, I know. I'm just. I'm trying to let you off. The no, hook. I hear you. I, well, you're you're not gonna. I hear you. There's but different ways of loving. Like for example, I have a folder in my phone called Leela, and I write down facts about my daughter, because kids like when their parents know facts about them. Mm -hmm. But that's just not how I love people. You know what I mean? No, you have the folder. So it is how you love people. It's how I love her because I'm not messing around with my daughter. But with most people, I might forget. Right. Bad example, but your last name is Glassman. I might forget that. That doesn't mean I... Like we were on the set of the show that I just filmed and I was telling... Every, What's the name of the show? It was called How We Roll. It was canceled, unfortunately. But we were on the set and I was making a point. I thought I was making like a folksy, charming point that I didn't know anyone's last name. And I remember our director thought that was like, I could tell, like they thought it was kind of disrespectful. Yeah, that's a, was that's like, a weird I, place to be when, when- I thought it was good. I was like, no. And I demonstrated that I knew everyone's name and I, I, I could have embarrassed them and been like, do you know these people's name? Do you know the stand-in's name or all that stuff? Like, so I know names. It just seems so Hollywood be like, you don't know my full name. What I'm saying is a difficult place- I also place understand their point. To be is- is uh, you feeling confident and comfortable acknowledging the truth, which if somebody thinks of it as a flaw, so be it, but everyone is flawed. Yes. And not that I think that's a flaw, but I'm just saying worst case scenario. I'll even say it is a flaw. Maybe I, I'm not great at, or, or, I, forgot, I forgot to remember. That's, it's not that I forgot, it's I, for, I never made an effort to remember because it was never demonstrated to me that people in Hollywood specifically want you to know their full name. And now I get it because I've given it some thought. They want you to be like, I loved working with them and maybe you plug them into something else. That's how the town but works. But it's, it's not, a, it doesn't matter. Sure. It, it doesn't matter outside of ego. It doesn't matter. It's it, unless they're Agreed. unless they're saying um, Pete's worth of me is valued by how many syllables of my names, which is ridiculous. But Val, who's very good at this, because I my wife Valerie has a very she'll go, Pete, how would you feel if someone didn't know your last name? And when you have that flip, you go like, Oh, I get it. It's not that I would have cared as much, but I understand there's a slight disrespect to not. And then she reminded me, Richard Rohr, my, my spiritual teacher who I love, he's like, that guy would never, he would be like, of course it's Glassman. Oh, right. the man of glass. Like just an opportunity to love. It is meaningless, but it's just a nice little opportunity to love. Why not love? I made the comedy store the other day talking to Ian Edwards. You know Ian? Is that his last name? And uh, for the audio only, I winked. And 
Oh, you only Pete has uh, uh, yet par- to what's, relinquish what's, the. Wig. Yeah, what's it called? Uh, uh, Seal half your face. Not the, what Justin Bieber has. The uh, stroke. No. Um, <laughs> fucking shit! My dad had it as a kid. Bell's palsy. Thank you. Is it Bell's palsy? Yes. Yeah. Um, and I'm talking to him outside. Uh, I've known him for years. And Bieber. Uh, Ian Edwards. Uh, I'm surprised you know Justin's last name. And uh, he says, "What's your name?" Because uh, he was looking up an old text message that we had, uh, because he he uh, canceled the day of a podcast, mm. and I haven't asked him back since. Buddy, I think Ian Edwards canceled day of my podcast, and I haven't had him on, and that was ten years ago. <laughs> right, like, right, no right. kidding. So we're trying to figure out in the comedy store what this because he doesn't remember it that way, and I admittingly remember it that way. I can't tell him I know because. I remember mostly my feeling, but I'm good at this. And this is what, but I don't remember the exact circumstance. So I'm comfortable. Let's look this up. And what happened was he canceled the day of, but there's no way of proving it because I remember we did it on the phone. He's like, I don't even have your number. Like a drug deal. I, I, I'm like, yeah, well, I, I don't have your number. I'm like, well, look in your text message. He goes, well, what's your name? And I go, Rick Glassman. I didn't know if he was joking or not, but I usually like to play things. If, it, if it's a joke, let's play along. If not, up at the top of my intelligence. If it is, it doesn't matter. Then later on in the conversation, I'm looking him up and go, what's your name? He goes, uh, uh, Ian Edwards. I go, I know. Although I know also you didn't know because it felt like he didn't. He goes, I didn't. And uh, he went for it. He didn't know. I believe him. Yeah. No, I mean, and, he went for it. Uh, and he's like, honest. it's no offense or whatever. And I truly, not only could I have cared less, I couldn't have cared less. Either way. I totally got it. I bet you there's been times where I forgot his name for whatever. Who gives a fuck? You know who I am. Yes. So I'm saying roles reversed. I don't really care. Look, both are opportunities to love. Not to be fucking Luke Wilson over here. We just want, that's Owen Wilson. We just want to love. But like- I see on your phone the three impressions you want to do, your dad, Owen Wilson, and who's the third one? Pacino. Okay, we'll get to it. Uh, Oh, you could get to it when we talk about vaginas. You could call it a hoo-ha. I'll tell you one thing. I never say snatch. Snatch is not a word for a dignified man. Rick, Rick, I'm here on the Take Your Shoes Off podcast. I love this show. I mean, once upon a time in Hollywood, have you seen it? <laughs> You're not impressed. It's all right. Fuck you me. leave. <laughs> ah, I thought that was very good. It was I good. My Pacino was good today. Adam Ray does a Pacino on this podcast all the time, so we heard it. Well, I just, Pete Holmes just left for those who are audio only. Um, So we'll use this opportunity to cut to commercial, I guess. This episode is sponsored by Next Evo Naturals CBD. Teddy, Teddy? Gotcha, man. It sounds great. Teddy, I've been taking these CBDs and they have calmed me down. You don't have to smoke this stuff. You can just take a pill. You take a pill. It mellows you out. It doesn't make you feel high at all. Also, this sounds like a commercial because it is, but I also take the stuff and it works. It relaxes you. They have a smart sorb technology where it absorbs CBD four times better than regular CBD oil. Getting into your system takes as little as 10 minutes. Next Evo Naturals are scientifically formulated to deliver more CBD in a way your body can actually use it and fast proven 29 times better absorption in the first 30 minutes. That's quick. Stop wondering if CBD is right for you. Try Next Evo Natural capsules, gummies. Do you know they also have mints and tropical creams? Clinically proven to better absorb in your body? Even more exciting. Get 25% off your first order of $40 or more at nextevo.com with promo code TISO. I take this stuff. TISO, babe. Calms me down. That's 25% off nextevo.com promo code. What is it? TISO. Who are you looking at? I'm looking over there. Why? I thought somebody was might be coming in the door, but no one's coming in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is brought to you by HelixSleep.com. Last time Adam came to Cleveland, we put him in our brand new Helix mattress. Adam, how was it? Well, I can tell you about how great my sleep was, and it was, so I did. But don't take my word for it. How hmm. about this fun stat? Helix was voted the number one overall mattress pick yep. of 2020. By GQ magazine. And Wired magazine as well. And Wired magazine. Yeah. Some people like a firm mattress. Some like a hard mattress. Some like a soft mattress. Some like to sleep on their side. Some like to sleep on their back. Hell, some people like to sleep on their fucking bellies. Maybe you run hot. 
maybe you run cold. I went through that in about 15 seconds. Go online, take their, as they say, two minute sleep quiz. You'll get out of there in under 60 seconds. They'll recommend a mattress and they'll ship it to you. Anyone can sleep on this mattress. We're talking tall people, short, short people, people, middle sized people. people. Those are the main middle three. In, middle income people. Middle aged people. So if you're looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, you order the mattress that you're matched to and the mattress comes right to your door, ship free. That's helixsleep.com slash Tyso. Try it out for five nights for free. Wait a minute. It's not. Mark, I told you it was five nights. You get to try it out for 100 nights. Oh, my God. Risk free. <laughs> Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows at helixsleep.com slash Tyso. That's up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows at helixsleep.com slash Tyso. Right You're going to go try it right now? <laughs> Prove oh, it. I guess you won't be playing craps anymore because you'll be sleeping too comfortably. Hey, go buy a mattress. Ricky Glassman. He's an Aspen. I met him in Aspen. He had me gasping. High altitude up in Aspen. I missed it. Here's the key. <laughs> hmm. um, Thank you. I like to think that I throw people stuff the way jokes work um, on network television. Can I give you, can I explain? Yeah. In the office, they make a joke um, that works because it's pretty simple and people get it. Yeah. Under that joke is a more layered reference and more obscure that if people I I don't it. get it, it doesn't matter because they still got the top joke. Mm -hmm. But people that get it, like in cartoons when they do one for the kids and the adults. Yeah. I threw it to you for you to catch. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't catch it, it's still going to land where it needs to be. I like that. Thank you. It still hit my body. What, what are we doing with that? Put it in your pocket, huh? Putting it here. That's okay. That works. One in my mouth for five seconds. Oh, yeah, as long as it wasn't 20. I love that <laughs> while we were talking, you that got up so good. and you went to the bathroom. I really had to You go. didn't ask. You didn't wait for a thing. You just made yourself as comfortable as you wanted to be, which to me makes the other per person comfortable. I agree. I went college. You went Some college? people go high school. High school is, can I go to the bathroom? Right. I went college. I like that. I'm a grown man. First base. I'm auditing this class anyway. Yeah. Oh, is that how you went to college? Mm -mm. Didn't I, you study religion? I went to a religious college, yeah, where you had to study religion. Mm. It was one of it was like the you know, like the core curriculum. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to put words in your mouth, at least not for longer than five seconds. But would you say your religion is comedy? Speak on that. That is so funny. I would say that many things have the ability to unify people, which is the you know, the function of religion. I don't want to answer this too seriously, but religion means religio. Ligio is like from the word ligament. So re-ligament, reconnect. So things like music, sex, comedy, art, anything that makes you feel less alone in the world can be considered a religious experience, I would say. How's my Pacino now, bitch? You want to get Adam Ray? You think Adam Ray has religio bits? I'll tell you right now. <laughs> Are you allowed to playfully call someone a bitch? Like I don't want to. I don't want to end my career <laughs> for, for that playful. Uh, I'll imagine his relationship with Dwayne Johnson now is going to end your career. You know he and the Rock are friends. Really? Yeah. They're not friends. They follow each other. The Rock posts stuff with Adam. They do videos together. It's not a friend. Well, I mean, they're friends like you and I are friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you that. The Rock is a guy that I, I've never met him, but. One time I was supposed to interview him. He ended up not being there, but I was like relieved that he wasn't there. He's so just impressive. <laughs> and I, I didn't want to meet the sun. Everyone's I mean? a flawed human. What do you think? I don't know that. Seems like it. Fucking kiss ass. <laughs> One sec, bitch. Hello. I feel like mine is better than yours. They <laughs> hit. The History of My Skin by Adam Ray. That's up for debate. <laughs> See, what you're doing is Pacino from Scent of a Woman. It's a little bit Southern. What I'm doing is I just had a cognac. I'm relaxed. Now I'm, I'm doing Pacino in line at Panera trying to get a second bagel. <laughs> I don't... Well, let, let me ask you this. You probably ordered an everything bagel. Is that right? I ordered this one sesame, one everything, and one broccoli cheddar. Hoo-ha. Oh, you, just, you just sounded like a guy saying hoo-ha at that point. 
Well, everybody's a guy saying who are at some point. Right? What, you think I don't know that? I don't know what you know. <laughs> All I know is that I just saw Chocolat for the first time last night. Who are? I'm jumping in on this. Chocolat. 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 La, la, la. Chocolat. La, la, la. I ne- wait. I got a question for you. Who are? Juliet Binoche. What was the best scene in any, any given Sunday? Every given scene. That movie's a masterpiece. That is correct. You win a softball. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, can we plug it? Carry around a basket of softballs in the back of my Hyundai Tucson. This, a, this episode, just in case there's a Pacino trivia about to break out. <laughs> you, you win a softball. <laughs> uh, hey Al, this episode will come out probably October. Do you have any shows you want to plug? Yeah. All right. Um, well, we'll see you later, man. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I, Check out AmerianComedy.com oh for all the tour dates. But oh also boy. check Pacino, the, the Pacino.org for all casino-related Pacino dates. I'm playing the Mirage in Taj Mahal. Al, I have a question. What do you call a vagina? A pussy. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye. I'm not good with wordplay. <laughs> oh, my God. What if he said it? Oh, man. Snatch is not a gentleman's word. Oh, I wanted him to say a hoo-ha, not a snatch. You know who says hoo-ha? And it's hoo-ha. It's from the Marines. You know who says that? Lieutenant Frank Slate. Al Pacino. They they say hoo-ra. That's what he's saying. He's a Marine. Is that what he's saying? Yes. I'm pretty sure. From from, uh, um, uh, what Adam was doing. What, What the fuck? Son of a woman. What I'm saying is I'm doing Pacino. He's doing Frank Slate. Right, but I'm saying the origins of hoo-ha is actually hoorah. You actually want me to stop doing the voice, and I find that. I'm okay with it. I think very, they want you to stop, though. Very funny. Not according to the comments. Let me take a break. Boop, boop. I'm going to climb down the comments. <laughs> wow, this was a mistake. A year ago, we animate the whole thing. <laughs> I, I, make a whole, I make a video and do all the comments on a premiere to make it seem that way. Um, what was your question? Uh, how much money do you have? <laughs> <laughs> what is your, what is a better question? Uh, I think it's kind of funny that organically we kind of just outed Ian Edwards as somebody <laughs> who bails. Well, actually my first thought was maybe he has some like hidden insecurity. I'm looking up to see if I can prove. You, there's no way you have texts from 10 years ago. I mean, Ian Edwards and I haven't texted enough that he's even in my history like it just I was gonna say also that that you wouldn't have had that phone so it would have to be an email I think you it's Uh all on the cloud baby 10 years ago there was no cloud you're a cloud edit that out edit it back in fine but bleep it all right but bleep your so it's just beep a cloud we oftentimes a a classic Tyso gag is we bleep the word but we don't take out the audio Tyso take your shoes off did I sound, and we're back, confused? <laughs> I knew what Daiso was. Are you past at the comedy store? I only do produce shows at the comedy store. I've never... So you're not on the wall as a past... Mm-mm. You know, because while you were in the bathroom, uh, I think I was taking a shit, right? <laughs> uh, I uh, sold a, one of my pieces of merch, which is a not past at the comedy store hoodie. What do you mean? This is a real thing? This is a small, so I can't give it to you, but this okay. is what it is. Are you not past at the comedy store? I'm not, and I wear it as a point of pride at this point. I um, I love playing the comedy store, and <laughs> I, and I, I wouldn't say maybe it's my ego. It's not that I'm not past; it's that I've never gone that route. Yeah, I get enough spots there just doing produced shows. Yeah, you're not past. I mean, that's that's like saying. Like, why phrase it so negatively? I don't, that's the problem. I think that people think that something that, that represents inclusion and or being part of something that they, that they, that would benefit them mm-hmm. as negative, as opposed to the reality of everybody is in some things and not other things. Yeah, but you could say I'm freelance. That's like a nice way of saying you're not past. So is Ian Edwards, but he's past. I just feel like there's a difference between pro-peace instead of anti-war. You know what I'm saying? Dude, yes. Hmm. Fuck yeah. I've been talking about this for weeks. Real? Is real? Is this real? Pro-peace? 
this guy is so important. Yes. Because you know why? Tell me. There's so much fucking hate in this world. Well, yes. And discriminatory, systemic, ideological truths. Yes. Take, for example. I will. You're walking down the street, with right? A, with a better Pacino. Go on. And uh, you see a, a black man. Okay. And your thought, because I know you, you're a cool guy. You think, wow, I bet that guy is just, you know, just another human being. <laughs> but I go out of my way to think that. Yes. Well, there's just another human uh -huh. being. You see a black guy. <laughs> Whenever Pete Holmes sees a black guy, he thinks, good for him. <laughs> just another human being. You're just another human. That's how you know you're not quite there. If you're still going like, <laughs> look at another, you see an Asian person, another equal human being. Mm -hmm. But you have to say that. It would be nice to just have no thought. Just person. There's yeah. a person, uh, and then one day you'll you'll get there. Yeah. But where you are now is you see a black guy or an Asian there's girl. There's just another human being. Yeah. And you think also you think <laughs> brave <laughs> <laughs> for for being who they are. Yeah. Good, good for them. Wow. You I, think good for them. This bit is gone. I don't know their names. Yeah. <laughs> but good for them. Sure. There are some people that will see a black guy or an Asian girl walking down the street, and you know what they think. Hmm. Fuck that person. Mm. Or a white girl. Yeah, I, people have different prejudices yeah. and racism. And the problem is we all think that that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But you know what the truth is? It does. And until we could acknowledge our flaws, yes. we can't do anything to fix them. Right. So that's why I actually want to kind of turn this podcast into something a little bit different. And I want to know, what do you think we could do for the transgendered community and for marginalized um, people, redlining? What could we do? Because we have a voice. What could we do to help bring these people not to be all the same, mm -hmm. separate, but equal? A chicken pot pie. What could we do? Everybody maintains their unique flavor. Not a melting pot. A chicken pot pie. Wow. Right, a melting pot puts everything together. A chicken pot pie is they're all in there yeah, together. There's a carrot, there's a pea, there's that, a hunk of chicken. That's like being pro-peace instead of anti-war. It's something I like to say. What can we do? Yeah, I have an idea, but I'll tell you after you. So you asked to tell me your answer? No, I'm just saying I've thought about this a lot. I just want to admit that this isn't... No, honestly, you Rick, on the spot. that's good hosting because I, now I don't feel like... I, I feel like it is the, you know accumulation of a million little things like i like putting my pronouns and my profiles and stuff and you think that's like insignificant but i think that really matters like if there was a group that was fighting for representation and there was a thing that they were doing i would want to know that people that i admired were doing that as well so little things like that not no good i think that's i think that's okay uh, honestly i think that's okay yeah i don't know what change that makes well, what I'm, yeah, that's interesting. What I'm talking about is a little bit of a butterfly effect thing. Well, you might be looking for more of like a sledgehammer approach. I'm looking at these little subtle, I love you, I see you, I love you, I see you, and you do I love you, I see you, and enough people do I love you, I see you. That is a big change as opposed to like, what's your answer? Like some huge rally or screaming? So your I love you, I see you means more than thoughts and prayers or do you put it in around the same place? Well, I love you, I see you isn't ethereal. Thoughts and prayers is ethereal. Is I love you. you. A lot of people would say thoughts and thinking of somebody and praying for them is a form of love and, se and seeing that. I would be one of those people. I was right. just wrongly guessing that you were saying thoughts and prayers is sort of nonsense. No, no, I'm saying, I'm say it, I, I don't think it's nonsense as much as I don't think it is a solution. So I wonder, what That's could we do for redlining? What is redlining? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. Redlining is when... Um, uh, com communities or uh, rather uh, 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 districts, cities, uh, kind of categorize things based on um, income, which is a pre uh, established originally a prejudice for marginalized people. Mm. And uh, it's for, you know, these people and these people here, these people here for school districts and for voting and such. I so understand. it's like they don't get to be in the good things. Right, and, right. And, um, I you know, and like... The, I'm going to maybe get some shit for this, but by the comedy store not passing us, they're kind of redlining us. <laughs> Having just learned this term, I don't feel yeah. even comfortable laughing at that room. I understand. And um, <laughs> I will laugh at my own discomfort. 
what is your big solution? I, I was kind of making the argument that small, lots of people doing a small thing, even though that's not like- gonna, I, I think that's right. Yeah. But, but how do you get lots of people to do a small thing? Well, I, I change, I, again, I'm, I'm agreeing with you that putting your pronouns in your profiles isn't like a huge thing. But when I saw people that I admire doing it, then I it's, did it. It, you, it made you feel like, like oh, I want to do that. It's just a small, but I think big change comes from small. What, it, what I want to see for all of these marginal groups is, is the normalization of their feelings and the inclusion of their feelings. I think that stuff is really important. I think language is important. I know language is important. That's what I'm saying. So even something as small as putting your pronouns in your in your profile has a larger effect because what you're doing is considering the that, that's what appropriation like uh, cultural appropriation is really just the radical idea that you're considering how another group might feel. Like you you can say that doesn't make sense to me. Why can't I wear a dashiki or whatever? But you go the people who uh, originated the shiki have spoken and been like that doesn't make us feel great. I re so I, like I like giving space to other people's feelings when it comes to groups and when it comes to people. Like if you're having a hard time, I don't want to use my brain when you're coming at me with a heart thing. You know what I mean? You know, I I, I, I was coming at this with uh, a little bit more irony at first, but now that we're here, I can't tell when you're being ironic. That's the meanest thing you've ever said to me. I feel well, like you know like, everything you I'm doing. Put on the hat when you're. Yes, I thought you when you said let's go in a different direction. I was like, oh, I guess well, this is what the show is. Do you remember before when when I said uh, when Ian says I don't know your name and I say Rick Glassman because it works in either way? Yeah, your Looney Tunes thing. You said like a cartoon. When there's a joke for the parents, but it also lands in the laps of the kids. That is a different analogy. This is more. I, it's a lot of times. I, I joke all the time and I don't, I really don't know when other people are joking. I have a really hard time telling. Yeah, I understand. So what I do is, uh, and this was subconscious at first, I will always joke and treat it real. Like I'll always play the game and I'm joking, but I'm playing myself and everything I'm saying is grounded in reality. Yeah, but when you bring up something that's really right, so I, I, my intention wasn't to touchy. make my intention wasn't to make fun of anything. No, I understand. I'm not trying to hold your feet to the fire here. I'm saying, if you want me to follow you into silly town, not what I, I had no expectation of it. Really, I'm, I was just admitting that my intention at first was here's a talking point that people talk about. I see, and I'm going to throw it out there, and wherever it goes, I'm happy with. I want to admit that I'm a little out of the loop as to like what we're talking about. Like when I see people and they tell me about what's going on in the news, I'm t I tend to be in the dark. So I was really just trying to yes and your hosting. So my my truth of that is not only do I believe that you are, not only am I, ev almost everybody is. They have a couple of things that they've adopted as their truth and they're, this is my team and they've done the research and I'll come and I'll take some of the stuff. And though I, I, I do think there's an importance to these things, admittingly, it's like, whatever, man, I'm about so many things. So I do find that because I listen to people ch chat about this shit and talk about it on, on stage. And it's like, you're not saying anything. Hmm. So my thoughts were, maybe Pete has a point of view on this, maybe he doesn't, but I just wanted to see where it goes. No, I just came at you with an earnest, you should put your pronouns in your profile. And I'm not even saying that, I'm saying I find value and inclusion in doing that. So when you said that, that got me actually like, ooh, I wanna talk about this, like for real, hat on or off. And I was thinking about that in, re in regard to recycling and how like, listen, Pete putting his pronouns in his profile, I mean, talk about a PPP. What is that really gonna do if everybody doesn't whatever? And I think about this whenever I'm recycling. Am I, is this is doing anything? Well, it's the starfish story. You know the starfish story. You don't know the starfish story? Mm -hmm. There's a couple great stories that are wonderful. I'm, I want to tell both of them because they're life changers. Starfish is one of them the scorpion and the frog? No. Okay. What is this, drive? Uh, the other one is the perhaps parable, which is amazing. I love the perhaps parable. I use it in my life constantly. The starfish story I use less frequently, but it's just sort of baked into, into my bones, right? Guy's walking down the street and there's all these, uh, down the street, he's walking down the beach and there's hundreds and thousands of starfish that have been washed up from the ocean and they're baking in the sun and they are going to die. 
And there's a guy walking on the beach this way, and there's a guy walking on the beach the other way. And there's a, the guy walking one way is picking him up and throwing a starfish. Every once in a while, he's picking up a starfish that's getting cooked in the sun, and he's throwing it back in the ocean. The other guy walking up to him goes, what are you doing? There's thousands of starfish. You can't possibly make a difference. And the first guy says, made a difference to that one. Mm. And he throws the starfish. And that's the starfish story. You get it. Love so it. It's a beautiful story. I give money to homeless people. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And people can go, well, that's not even made right. a difference. Made are we, difference are we trying to change culture or are we trying to change a moment for a person? And those yeah. are those are two different things. I yeah. can connect to that. And honestly, I'm doing it for me. I mean, like, obviously the oldest I'm philosophical doing it for them. question that exists is when you give somebody a dollar, are you doing it because it makes you feel good or it helps them? Yeah, and I'm here to concede that it's it's certainly both. Mm -hmm. But the, the other one is an abstraction. The feeling that I get that I'm there to, I want I want to sleep better. Like I like to pay for dinner. That's something I like to do with my friends. And one of the things I do, it helps me sleep. It does. Because I, if you didn't pay for dinner, you'd have a harder time sleeping? No. It's because, that's guilt. It's because I, I actually saw a YouTube video where a monk was explaining how to fall asleep faster. And he said, try, what the monks do is they fall asleep in something called the sea of merit, which means at the end of your day, lay in bed and take 10 minutes to just think of all the good deeds you did during the day. <laughs> That's nice. And not only is it incredibly boring, so it makes you fall asleep, but instead of thinking of all the things you could have been and should have done and all the guilt and the shame and the and the unworthiness and the ugliness and the nastiness, mm -hmm. you're just having little thoughts. Like tonight I'll go, Pete, you were kind to Rick. Like I'll, I'll remember, and I made an intention to say, don't forget to tell Rick how funny he is, how talented he is. Really, you think is. about that before you go yes. somewhere? Yes. Because why would I... Spend my time remembering how funny you are. You know how much energy that would take? Just imagining what you're thinking about it all the time. I know how funny you are. Because I'm thinking about my sea of merit. Not just to sleep, but I'm just like, what can I do? Rick, we could all, this could all go away. Maybe maybe God was just asleep and having a dream and, it, and that thing wakes up and it's all over, mm -hmm. right? In this moment, I see you. I love you. Mm. You're valuable. And then there's also things that are special about you. You're very funny. You you make me feel welcome. You make me laugh. Although uh, your your three <laughs> drinks makes me laugh. You have a nice home. I think you're doing a good job sculpting your life. You have nice taste in furniture. Whatever it may be. So as I'm falling asleep, I now I crave those things. And it's I'm going to say it's 99% for me. I, I was at, coming off the freeway and there was a there was a there, it was horrible. There was a woman crying and I gave her money and I did it for me. As soon as I drive away, she's, I, I'll, it's gone. It's, it's, mm -hmm. I'd like an update, but it's gone. But, you know, tonight I'll go like, well, you, you, you know, did that and that and that and that. And look, it's, it's hacking the system. We yeah, are yeah. selfish. You know, whether I, or not we admit it. I talk about that on it, here all the time. We're selfish whether we admit it or not. So and that's just, not a bad thing. Just lean into it. It's okay. What I'm saying is it's all okay. Get addicted to good things. Be selfish in a positive way. If, if I'm being selfish and giving someone money, that's a good use of, of my own sort of shadow, my own shortcoming. Do you think you could be selfish in a positive way that doesn't involve other people? Yes. Right. I, in fact, if you're thinking about doing the Sea of Merit thing, which I recommend, most of the things are kindnesses that I did for myself. Give me an example. I set a timer for 90 minutes. Yeah. That's kindness to myself. I yeah. exercised today. That's kindness to myself. Yeah. I ate healthy. That was kindness to myself. I, I, you know, took time to read today. I took time to meditate today. I took time to whatever it may be. Those things all go on the list. So they don't all have to be, I gave money or Does I bought Does that dinner. include saying no to things? Absolutely. That's one of the best ones. Yeah, right. You put up a little boundary. And remember last time I, 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 I canceled this podcast because I had an earache. And I was just like, I just can't focus on anything other than this earache. Also, but I, I don't said, want you here with an earache. Sure. Those aren't contagious, but sure. Maybe if we soaked in the same water, question mark? Well, usually that's we do this in the bath, but um, I... I understand. I was hoping we were. Remember, remember this? Remember this? Yeah. We, and we're back. Hilarious. Thank you. Um, anyway, that's Sea of Merit. Do you want to hear the perhaps story? Yes. What if you said perhaps? That was the beat. You thought about it. Well, I thought that people thought that I would say it, so I built suspense and I did what we like to call in the biz a left turn. Well, I didn't know we had a term for that. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. You know what we didn't do? And we'll hear the perhaps story. And then also, I don't know if we have time for this, but next time you come on or if my dad comes on and then I go on yours. Mm -hmm. uh, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's a laugh I do. Um, it's a laugh where the, it's a bomb that goes off underwater. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Is... Uh, You'd be a great person to talk comedy math with. 
Comedy math. Yeah, because you love bits and you get them, and I think about them constantly. Yeah, and and like and like to open them up and why. A lot of people say when you deconstruct a joke, it makes you, it not funny anymore. You kill it on the table, but you don't have to deconstruct it for the audience. You could do it because you just enjoy science. Yeah, I, I'd rather do it after the bit's been retired. That's when I'd rather talk about why it's funny. But I like to do it not not with a bit in particular, but structures oh, yeah, yeah, and sure, devices sure. and sure. why and take the seven jokes that exist and talk about how they were. Like my instinct was just talking. Oh, left turn is their name for it. I bet I bet you I could talk to you about the science of left turns for a while. Sure. So I'm just planting that seed. So if we do it, we could show this clip and then say X months later. And we did it. Yeah. I like it. I yeah. My interest in talking about comedy has decreased as I've done done it longer. Okay. I'm now more in the school of like get out of the way it's not about you i'm not saying that to you no but what does that have to do with communic comedy communication i can't really explain it but if you're doing comedy by doing you mean professionally or no I, on stage if you're right. doing comedy and you are the one doing it to the audience it's very different from you are part of a thing and comedy is happening I can't really explain it better than that, but the best shows in my life are not when I'm thinking of like what device I'm employing. I'm thinking of like, what is my truth in this moment? Like really, and, and where are they? What sound are they making? What frequency are they mm -hmm. emitting? And, it, and you surrender a little bit into it and you drop your ego. I have to work to go like, this isn't about me. This isn't about me getting high from killing or uh -huh. sad from bombing. Just like, this is life. I'm not trying to be baby Yoda. I'm just saying, this is life. Pete Grogu. isn't doing your podcast. Life is flowing between us. Drop it. Drop Pete a little bit. Drop Rick a little bit. And, and it's not as a technique to do a better show. You just will have a better life if you can recognize that you're just a piece of the wind. I agree with everything you're saying. And yet I'm not done overanalyzing it. I wouldn't, I don't think you are. Aren't you younger than me? Probably. 43. Were you 42? Three. Or 43, right? But you said World War 42, didn't you? Yeah, but I, th I was just saying that could have been closer to my real age. I don't know why I said 22, other than that's the age that I think I am if you woke me up in the I middle of I pictured it as World War tw 2022. I thought that was what you were getting yeah, at. Like World War Z. Hilarious movie. <laughs> when I think of comedy, I don't think of being on stage. And like, it's not even secondary that I, oh, I guess I could also do that on stage. I really think of comedy as a religion and as a language. And when I talk, when I like to deconstruct it, it's about connecting with another person mm -hmm. and they have to know the language. So it's my job when I'm the one to commute, like, I mean, from my point of view, it would be, if somebody doesn't speak the language, it's my job to either recognize that or help facilitate. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot about, as somebody who is, was somebody who always did bits, and now I often do them um, by, by design. Like I've made a point. Yeah, to go from often to always, or from always to often. Uh, to, go from, to go from very, very often to uh, uh, check in if this is okay that I'm doing this. Sure. And what I've learned is the reason people don't like the bit isn't because the bit isn't good or um, even wrong timing. It's they're not on the same frequency. Mm -hmm. And I have a very hard time speaking any other language. Even when I'm talking to you about the truths of, of discrimination or recycling, which we never got into, which maybe we will, you gotta have some level of irony and satirizing things, because otherwise I'm just like, it feels too self-important. It feels boring. Mm -hmm. Being around something that's boring is, I literally, I'm, I'm, I, I just check out, I can't. I need jokes. Yeah. So by better understanding how other people see a joke that I see, it helps me get tools of connecting with more people. Like, and since you're somebody who understands that structure so well, while also being a very spiritual person in a way that I am attracted to. I want to, I want to do this with them, mm -hmm. with you at some point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does yeah. that, you know what I'm saying? I, I do like talking about it. I just, I just, I, I was only noting that as I'm getting older and doing comedy for over 20 years now, 
that has become less of a hobby of mine. I don't know why. I just thought it was interesting to share. Do you feel like you've gotten funnier, less funny, or different but equally funny from seven years ago, on stage particularly? That's interesting because my my favorite special is my first are my earlier specials. I really, though, I think those are like the funniest slash silliest. And then as I grow as an artist, just as you grow as a human being, the comedy itself gets more complicated. Mm -hmm. And because I'm talking about things, I'm much more proud of the older one, the, the newer ones. Because you feel they're, they're... They're more honest. I'm digging deeper. I'm being more tr honest okay. about what it's like to be getting older, to becoming a father, all, the, all these different things. So, but you hold on. Go you finish that. I interrupted you. Though you're prouder of the newer stuff, I'm prouder of my newest stuff. But it's not as straight, silly, funny as my early stuff. And what are the benefits of the straight, silly, funny? Everybody's invited. You just go and you laugh and you have a silly, fun time. There's less. There's some, but there's less. Um, I, I just feel like as you get older and as you mature as an artist, the soup just gets thicker. Are those two things? Um, uh, guided together, getting older and becoming more mature as an artist? Yes, if you're paying attention, I think, yeah. And it should be that way. I would say so. I Here's what I do. When I'm watching other people do comedy, I sometimes imagine wh who I consider the greats to be doing the bit they're doing. Who are the greats? Name, no order, just name some. Well, Chappelle would be a good example. And I understand some of it. It's hard to say because, I, you know, Louis, I understand has been scandalized. That's, that's fine. Louis is amazing. I, I just happen to be, uh, scandal noted, mm -hmm. a fan of his stand-up comedy. Yes. Um, you know, yeah, I feel like I will say less so because I, I wish he had dealt with it, all of it better, but still. If I, I understand that too. Do you understand? Yeah. I just, I, I, I it's, it's thin ice. I, I don't, I'm not keeping my, finger on the pulse of what, how we're supposed to talk about these things. I, but I hate that we have to supposed to. I know. But as stand-ups, uh, Louie and Dave, uh, uh, flaws aside, we're always the guys that I'm like, these people are, are sending the bucket in their well pretty down. They're going deep. They're going deep into what it feels like to be a grown Does Bill Burr, uh, and scratch Bill Burr. the service to you? Yeah, Bill Burr. Da, 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 da. Yeah, Bill Burr. I just saw him at the comedy store recently doing just some new stuff and talking about like going to shows and we made a joke that you love to go watch comedy on your off nights. You don't do that when you're someplace, sometimes you watch when you're at a venue, but I was very rarely do I truly feel like I'm in the audience, you know? I've never felt in the audience. That's the whole point of being a performer is even when you're a little boy, you recognize, I had a bit about this. I was like, every time my parents would take me to a play, I was really earnestly waiting for them to, to call tap you me on the shoulder and bring me on stage. <laughs> but I'm saying with Bill, I do, even though it almost never happens, with Bill, I am in the audience. Yeah, yeah. I I'm agree. watching And like I saw magic. Chappelle at Radio City and I wasn't a comedian for an hour right. and a half. But like the thing that those voices give us um, is to me a, a pretty interesting litmus test where it's like, okay, this, this nonsense bit that I'm doing, and I'm not saying you can't occasionally do a nonsense bit. I think all three of those comedians occasionally do a bit that is a little bit lighter fare. But like you watch other comedians and I'm like, the greats would never do that. And I, I strive to do what the greats would do to become one of the greats, right? So the greats don't, mm -hmm. I mean, Brian Regan is, is one of the greats and he does First album fun. I ever listened to. I, I, I love that for you. <laughs> I just loved him. I love him people, still. Not that many people on the podcast bring him I up. I realized saying I love that for you sounded like fuck you, but I really mean like, I it love that. It a little condescending. I know because that show made it, I, I, I used to think that phrase was okay to say. I'm learning it's not okay to say. Anyway, meaning it, you're going to sound insincere. Brian Regan is a silly funny and he's one of the greats. So there's a way to do it. For me, I'm finding as I'm getting older, my, my specials get a little bit less pure, silly, funny. Mm-hmm but they get way deeper. I'm doing jokes about the natures of, of existence. These bits find traction and lives as, on social and all this stuff that right. makes me really proud. But if I'm like looking for like a good old fashioned honky tonk throw down with Pete Holmes, I'm watching Faces and Sounds. You're watching uh, what? I faces and Sounds. Off. Hold on, I can't hear you. Say it again. We're in the same room. It's just a figure of speech, but I actually didn't hear you. So say it one more time. Faces and Sounds is, is my first HBO special and it's very silly. There's one or two bits in there that I'm like, Oh, I'm, tr I'm trying to say something, but for the most part, I'm just going like, one of the bits is called Deep Voice Kid, and it's, and it's a true story. I was at a pool, and there was a kid behind me. I couldn't see him, but he had a really deep voice, and he just kept being like, Mommy, <laughs> Mom. But it sounded like a man. That's it. 
And sometimes that's what you want. Green eggs and ham, double snakes. These are, these are the bits that I do when I do a corporate, like I have to be clean. And they're like very simple, silly bits. And I sort of miss them. Now I get on stage and I'm like, you believe in God or you believe in nothing. It's the same thing. Either God, you call your nothing God or you call your God nothing. Like either way, yeah. we all believe in something you can't photograph, something you can't explain, spontaneously erupted into everything that is. Same team. Uh, and that is to, in my, from where I'm sitting, a thousand times more interesting than double snakes, but there is part of me that misses the silly funny. So what do you do with that misses, accepting that it's gone or do you chase it at all? Isn't that what we do in our lives? I mean, I, I'm trying to I keep know. the levels of my silly funny in my ordinary life, how I am with my wife, how I am with my daughter. I want to keep those levels up. But watching Bill Burr, I've known Bill for 20 years almost, and it's like been watching him for that long, certainly. I've watched him uh, grow and perform. I, I remember Bill was one of the first people I opened for, and so was Jim Gaffigan. and I got really lucky. My friend Dan Kaufman out of Chicago, he yeah, there you go, He's great funny comedian, very good, great guy. He got me these gigs, emceeing for Bill Burr and Jim Gaffigan. And I remember when I got, I was in New York for some reason. It was in front of the cellar, and I was basically an open micer, and I had emceed for Gaffigan, and I was about to go emcee for Bill Burr. And I just, I'm only saying this to be like, look how far Bill Burr is now Bill Burr, mm -hmm. all caps on the marquee. But there was a time when G Gavigan said to me, he was like, who are you going out on the road with? And I said, uh, Bill Burr. And this was so long ago that Gavigan went, Billy Burr? Like he couldn't believe mm -hmm. that he was headlining. I, I, I like that story because it's like, yeah, he's a Titan now, but every Titan at some point sure. was figuring it out. And I think that's really beautiful. Gaffigan is actually a great example. He struggled for like a decade. Or I've heard stories that he was almost like, not a punchline, but somebody that people made fun of. Like, oh, the weird guy from Indiana won't stop trying. Mm. Now he's one of the fucking biggest comedians of all time. I feel like in the movie, we delete those, that struggling time is just a montage. I think that's the most interesting point in your career. Bill Burr, still though, he his energy is so silly. Even though he's very uh, uh, direct and almost aggressive, his voice and his, you know, like there's still like a silliness that's built into me. It's interesting. I, I wouldn't really agree with that. Only because I can tell you like a good midrush. What does that mean? Oh. What does midrush mean? Uh, usually when two rabbis are debating about the, the Old Testament, it's called a midrush. So what would be the midrash? Just a good old fashioned argument. Oh, I thought you were saying you you know of a midrash that would change my mind. Oh no no no! I like this is gotcha. a midrash. I, I, what I'm saying is I'm only disagreeing because I feel like you like the energy of a disagreement. Meaning there are a few bits that Bill's doing, and I'm like, this is. I think he's just <laughs> he's just saying what he thinks. I don't I don't see. Oh, the, I agree. I don't the think glimmer in his eye that he's like I'm just fucking around. Like I'm like maybe he does. He he certainly walks the line. Got you. Silly isn't always by design. It's just some things are I'm silly. I'm with you. He's a funny guy. So even if he's getting super worked up, you're like, it's still Yeah, there's a character our, behind it, even though it's real. Yeah, exactly. Man, he's so funny. He's, the, he's one of the kings. So, I mean, I, I'm not giving you advice. I find value in when I'm watching other comedians go, picture Bill Burr doing this bit. You know what I'm saying? Or pick whoever your favorite is and go, would they do this bit? And when you're doing bits, go like, would the greats do this bit? And you're like, probably not. But mm, the bit- I've never thought of that that, that way. I, uh, I, I don't do, with me, this is what I'll say. I don't mean to be self-serving. The material I'm doing now, I'm like, this is, this is Pete being as great of a Pete as Pete can be. This is being honest. Yeah. There's bits that I'm getting uncomfortably close to my own vulnerability hangover the next day. Like talking about how much money you have. Well, that I, I actually like things that that bump up against my ego and make me squirm because I makes love me wonder I why. love being uncomfortable. Not because uncomfortable feels good, but it it, uh, it makes me know that what I'm going to say matters. I would completely agree with that, and that's why when Ali Wong did the bit about being a millionaire, I was like, I'm envious because I I, I hadn't yet gotten there to the point where you could admit something like that. To me, the the go tos are always like I had a bit about how I hate my girlfriend's parents, like always, just whoever my girlfriend was. I hate your parents. Get your fucking parents out of here. And when I started doing that bit, I got the charge of what it feels like to say something that usually you were told for thirty years: be a good boy, don't say mm -hmm. things like that. Or if you do say it like this, huh? Or if you do say it like this, exactly. Yeah, the things where you like you feel like you have to acknowledge that but maybe you, I should. You mentioned it earlier. Nothing is really gained, learned 
you know, by us pretending to quote Bill Burr. If everything you thought was printed out and handed out, who would have a job tomorrow? Nobody. But it's lonely. You want to talk about religion, religio, reconnecting. Lingabins. When I go on stage and be like, I hate my girlfriend's parents, that that hopefully can heal you if you've had an experience like you that. You being the audience. Listening. Yeah, you being the person listening to me right now. Speaking of being in the audience, I have found, and I love being in the audience. I have a hard time being in the audience because just by design, we've seen how the cookie is- um, Crumbled. Thank you. Even before that, baked, then crumbled. Sure, we've seen the eggs get laid. <laughs> You said it. But when I'm on stage, I almost, and I, I <coughs> how's your ear? 100%. Good. I, if I'm not in the audience somewhat while I'm on stage, I cannot gauge the set. And I mean that from a, from a growth perspective, like when reflecting back what worked, what didn't, what do I want to do again, why? You mean you have to put yourself in the audience a little bit? I literally have to while perform. I'm, I'm saying while on stage. Yes. If I'm not also watching me, I'm getting gold bloom vibes. Uh, yeah. When you when you're oh, thank the, you. when you're on the stage and you're up there and ooh, doing your little bit. What is this rayon? I can't do things like that. Do what? Ooh, yes. <laughs> I can't do impressions. Juggle <laughs> And we'll swipe back on his left. I can't, I, I can't do impressions, yeah, but thank great. you. Goldblum's great. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. well, uh, the dinosaurs come out and yeah, they want to eat my peanuts. Yes. Eat my what? Peanuts. Play it back. I said peanuts both times. Eat my penis. I believe you. You probably said that. Being in the audience for me on stage, being like watching me, thinking what I'm doing is funny, being interested in what I'm saying. Caring. That's, that's it. That's the job. I'm waiting for the weird part. I don't know if it's weird. It's just part of the, it's hard. It's sometimes hard to care so much about the thing that you've said so much. Mm -hmm. You know? Also, I, I feel like the piece of advice most stand ups, especially new stand ups, aren't following is uh, we could all do well to ask yourself, when would you laugh? <laughs> Instead of when would when are they supposed to laugh? What would have made you laugh? Yeah. That's why we do no, it. Right? I know, but no, uh, watch. I, I've been. I don't know why I've been. I had a couple shows lately where I'm just like, you didn't ask when would you laugh. Like you're pausing, but I don't think you would laugh. <laughs> I have friends, comedian friends, that in because you know we have our voice. We bring it on stage, and sometimes our stage voice. I just have to pee, so I'm checking the time. Go. No, no, no. May I? Yeah. It's gonna be great. Now you're in high school. Ooh, I really did exercise today, so I had a bunch of water. Can you get that on camera that I exercised today? Yeah, keep that in. What if people just lied sometimes, but not because they were scared or shameful, just when it served a greater purpose? I think that's most people's relationship with lying is at least when they do it, they either delude themselves or it truly is for the greater good. I feel like a lot of people lie um, out of out of shame or fear. Yeah, or unworthiness. Or it, it, this is incongruent with what I would want you to think of me and that is better for me and reality as I know it. <laughs> and, and it's not though, and nor no. is it sustainable and then it's confusing and resentments are built and let's just stop lying. I didn't love it, but I'm okay with it. You gave me the flaws. Yeah. I put it on my phone. I'm okay with it. But it's my phone. I'm okay with it. Right. I just have my OCD demons. OCD demons? I like their older stuff. <laughs> it was sillier. But as they got older, you know, it matured. The uh -huh. soup thickened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Reduced. It was a reduction. And then we poured it over duck breast. Are you going to be, uh, are you going to be one of the greats when it's said and done? You want to know how I think about it? That's a personal question, but I don't, not, not I like it. Not necessarily, but I guess if that's the only perspective you have. Sorry. Very good. No, I'm sorry. I, maybe I need to recalibrate this, but I tend to think of my stand-up, specifically my stand-up, as being something that like, when it's all done, people will look back, like the movie Idiocracy, and be like, that was you really good. You love the Wilsons. Good. Yeah, I only quote Luke. Luke and Owen mm -hmm. Wilson movies. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not that I, I don't feel underappreciated. 
um, as much as I, th well, I guess really you're getting pretty close to my, mm -hmm. my self-love. Let me put it this way, because this is maybe the least obnoxious way to put it. The stand-up I'm doing is what I think is really, really good stand-up. And that's the best thing we should all be able mm -hmm. to say about ourselves. Yeah. Whether or not public opinion ever catches up with that or if I'm ever like exactly in the zeitgeist, like, whoa, he's doing it. He's saying what we need said. I don't know. And that's not really important to me. Is it not? I mean, you said, who cares you if said, it is or it isn't? I'm, I'm going to do what well, I'm you said you wanted to be. Uh, you wanted to be one of the greats. So it seems like it matters. To me, I'm trying to do an impression of not just a good comic, but one of the greats. I'm trying to do what one of the greats would do. Because that helps, that, that just puts the bar a little bit higher for my own effort, uh -huh. which I think makes me better. So is, I guess, the practice of that comparative? I don't think so, because it's my own definition of what one of the greats is. So when I'm saying like, it would be the same thing as like, Peter, you being your highest self, like, are, is this the best Pete you can be right now? As you're writing a passive aggressive text to one of your friends, like, is that the best Pete? So it stops me for my own sake, for my own standards, for its, and, and we're back to for its own sake. Um, <laughs> would you, is your desire to be the best self and all of the self love and the, the, basically there's the language that you've spoken since I've met you a few years ago of just this type of positivity. This comes from, not from comedy and, and where you've matured, but f the foundation of the religious household that you come from and being more aware of things of higher purpose and beings. No, no. <laughs> so you weren't, so your standup that was sillier and goofier 12 years ago and 10 years ago, yeah. maybe seven years ago, yeah. that is now not as goofy, you were then less, what would you call it? I would say when I was being just a pure silly boy, yeah. I was more, af more afraid of my complex, more three-dimensional, deeper- Consciously you were afraid? Or unconsciously. Well, was it a choice to avoid those things because you were scared or you think you were doing silly because you weren't in touch with deeper layers? I didn't know layers? it. Yeah, I hadn't gotten in touch with it. I hadn't found a way to say yes to things that were a little bit stickier, a little bit more complicated, at least on stage. Saying yes, what's something you said yes to that you hadn't found a way to? Hmm? You said you hadn't found a way to say yes to things that were more complicated or sticky. Yeah. What have you now said anger, yes to? Anger, uh, embarrassment, confusion lust, greed, rage, whatever it So you be. weren't talking about those things you're saying? Yeah, I was trying to be what my, and they were great, but they trained me to be a golden boy, like they. A, my parents, forgive me. I didn't say who I was talking about. But in my family, I was very much the golden boy, and that's great, it's wonderful to be the golden boy, but at a certain point, you start growing up, and when you don't feel like it's good to get angry on stage or, or express, like, I hate my girlfriend's parents is another, it's, it's still a good example of a bit where I started to kind of wake up a little bit and, and be more comfortable with who I really am. Where is the, where is being able to be angry and stickier, mm -hmm. where does that negate the goofy? Why do you being able to have those things and be well, in I touch with those things? I don't think, I don't think it does. But coincidentally, Goofy went away as those things came in. Goofy didn't go away. Relatively. It's just not entirely goofy and silly. And even, I, this is, I, I feel like I'm up my own ass too far. But I Hate My Girlfriend's Friends is on my silliest special. So it was always there. It was always there. I'm just way more comfortable with things that the, gotcha. the, the undercurrent of the bit is never and no longer aren't I a good and special pure boy? And there were bits that I was like, and I, and I still like being good or whatever, to, wholesome or whatever you might want to call it from time I would to call time. it wholesome. Wholesome, sure. Um, that is not agenda number one, whereas the first 28, 30 years of my life, I was really concerned with whether or not you thought I was a good boy and didn't. <laughs> didn't uh, jerk off to pornography or whatever it might be. What'd you jerk off to? What do I jerk off to now? What did you, if not to pornography? Just off the dome, dude. I'm a storyteller. You're like a freestyle artist. It's always better off the dome. You've never done it off the dome? Yeah. Yeah, so you know. I don't know if it's better. I don't know if you've done the data, if you've done the work. All right, 
we we'll, we'll blur it. You jerk off now off the dome, and I'll look at something. Let's see who could come first. Well, you're going to come first. That's part of why it's better. There's more time with yourself. <laughs> Long, sloppy strokes. Okay. <laughs> Your next special. <laughs> well, that's a good example, dude. I, I mean, like, it's in the comedy community, the realization that I had to have, most comedians I knew didn't have to have that which is like, my shadow is okay. And by shadow, I don't mean it's bad or ugly or dark. I You're saying mean, that the part of you that, that doesn't come out the most to the people. Yeah. And this is true for everybody psychologically or whatever, but your jealousy, your greed, your pettiness, your ugliness, jerking off to pornography. I have a bit about it. I'm like, it's okay, but everyone can agree you're not at your best. It's not like, <laughs> it doesn't go on the highlight reel of your life. Do you know Andy Kozell? Mm -hmm. um, he, has a, he tweeted years ago, uh, is it me or does jerking off make you five minutes late to everything? That's very funny. Good. I would look at it. Continue. Look at that as an issue, though. I'm just kidding. Um, my favorite bit about jerking off to porn was... Uh, <laughs> You're not at your best. Is, is well, that's a great line. Thank you. But I go, it, you know, it's not... One, it's not, it's not great. It's not always great. Sometimes it's great. I can mm. see that sometimes it's great. Mm -hmm. You're nervous. You have a job interview. You bang one out. You moonwalk into the office, flick a lit cigarette at the guy, and you get the job. Like you just got to hear about this interview. You calmed yourself down. Yeah, Kinkos. Two years. It was great. Jk. Um, but sometimes it's not great. Like you just you do it, and it just didn't get you yeah, anywhere, and you just like kind of feel dirty. And I, I know this is true because one time I was jerking off, and as I came, I'm sorry, but as I came, I went, not worth it. I said not worth it. We'll cut to a clip. Uh, no, don't cut to a clip. Don't you do it, Papa okay. Smurf. I'm just kidding. I didn't I, know I could stop you. I've said something uh, uh, when I've, I've been in that situation before where I made myself, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I remember I made myself laugh, which was great because I would have been sad otherwise. Mm. I did something. I was just like, what am I doing? Why? Like as the climax yeah. was happening yeah. and it made me laugh. And I went from like sad to laughter during an orgasm. I thought it was, what a complicated cum. My next special. Long sloppy strokes or complicated cum? What do you think is better? <laughs> <laughs> well, one's the prequel to the other. Um, I think that you've just said one of the keys of life is almost my friend Rob Bell, who's another spiritual teacher who's great, had this uh, lesson that he's like, lesson he wrote in one of his books about how like the worst things that happen to us become our best stories mm. so really one of the keys to life as i found is if you can laugh while it's happening is 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 a real shortcut to joy because when you're doing that you're you have an outsider's perspective which is another way that's that is the audience i'm talking about yeah that perspective and also if you can't have it in the moment if you could reflect on it and see it you kind of, I feel like you gain a tool of perspective that next time you're in that situation, you have a new eye or a new vantage point. Sure. But that's being in the audience. When, when you could see why it's funny, the, then also you have to be able to con convey that to the audience as well. That's the craft of it. Mm -hmm. could, I, could I tell you something? Sure. Is this a bit? No. And you could always ask me that, and I won't. I will not lie unless I really think you'll know. It's like Ethan Hawke and Black Phone. I swear I won't hurt you. I've, I've only seen, seen the preview so yeah. many times. My, for a very long time, mm -hmm. almost always, mm -hmm. uh, from a kid to at least up to five years ago, and it still exists. I thought that everybody saw the camera that was over there. I mean that metaphorically. Like mm -hmm. we're in a situation and I do something, I'm doing it in the scenario that we're both on the same page of, imagine if this is how I responded to you without saying imagine if. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Because obviously it's just, I mean, it's a joke. I'm, I'm seeing it from over there. Yeah. We're, both, we're both standing there and we're not, I am. Yeah. And... This is a condition known as depersonalization. Keep going. Explain that to me. I'm just kidding. It is a thing. Some people actually have, they're depersonalized. So you're talking about depersonalizing yourself. I completely relate, by the way, 
when I was a kid, I used to go in the bathroom and talk in the mirror, and that's how I did my monologues because the show was happening. But if I wanted to film myself, I'd go like the real world. I'd go in and be like, I don't know about this puck guy, but I'd do it in the mirror. And I used to call it the Pete Show. And I do think it was an extension of people being like, well, angels and God are watching. And I was like, you might as well put on a little show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I completely relate. I've also had times in my life where depersonal, like the first time I smoked pot, this is going to sound like a joke, but I was 28 years old. And I smoked so much pot. It wasn't even that much. But I like literally two, three hits of very strong pot. First pot in my life, though. For weeks, I'm a sensitive boy. For weeks, I had what I call, and based on the things I found online, depersonalization, which is a deep and profound feeling that you are outside your life. And I, I hated it. It was a true nightmare. Well, that makes sense. And yeah, no, I don't okay. know if I concede that's what it is but maybe no i'm jk i i think what you're talking about is an appreciation for the show that is life that actually feels really nice yeah yeah and you're like if we're doing a show we might as well do a show yeah <laughs> yeah and it doesn't mean a show i mean yeah i think we're on the same page yeah we are um obviously it's not a show and there's no camera there well i would disagree my daughter's name is Leela, and that means the dance or the play, like the show of life. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, same page. I'm saying literally I'm not doing this for a camera. I hear you. And yet we are, and we're each other's cameras. But yes, go on. See? So much. You're, you're a spiritual guy. And, <laughs> um, and the disconnect that I had from people was that I just didn't know they weren't over there with me watching. I understand. Not a lot of people... Um, have climbed, I'm going to, not to say up is better and low is bad, but it's like I've climbed the ladder so high that they get off the ladder and go, wow, it's just on a ladder. Do you know what I'm saying? Like mm. to be living life, you're either stuck on the ladder and you're just climbing it. You're going to your job and you're eating a sandwich and you're having sex with your wife or whatever it may be. Nice. Yeah, she's hot. And this, this ladder wife is very, very it's hot. hot. Uh, four boobs. But anyway... When you get to a certain point, you get off the ladder and you can look back and go like, oh, that was just a show. Get off the ladder, meaning it's over? No, no, no. It's not a death metaphor. It just means- Ladder is a step it's to the a next ladder. Yeah, you get on the next ladder. But you got high enough on the ladder that you got off that ladder and started climbing another one. And then you realized, oh, I'm, we're just climbing ladders. It's all just sort of nonsense. Good nonsense, though. That's uh, what I would call my next special, good nonsense. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the, like, the idea of when things are boring. What's the point? Everything is so much as nonsense that if I'm not if I'm not learning something or helping somebody, I need to be being pleasured. I hear that, and I wouldn't, I couldn't if I wanted to change that, and I'm okay with that. But uh, to me, having a profound and deep. Ooh, we'll never well, know. Well, we'll get back to it next time, Pete. Thank you so much. We We're coming. End? Unfortunately, that's the time. <laughs> but if you want to find out the meaning of life, stick around for our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash take your shoes off. <laughs> Pete, thank you so much for coming. <laughs> that Theme is music. so funny. Blubbity blue. <laughs>